Today we're here for probably one of the most important obligations we have as citizens of this city, to keep cop killers behind bars. Those that attacked, killed New York City police officers, and now want to walk free. Equally important as our hero police officers who we honor, I have with me today members of the New York City PBA Executive Board, our delegates from these police heroes commands, Waverly Jones's brother, Manny, Harry Ryman's children, Harry, Margaret, Janet, and his grandson, Matthew. We're here today because we just went through a devastating tragedy again. In 1971 and all the years since that we've lost police officers, we've dealt with the tragedy of getting a word that our sister or brother police officers were killed in the line of duty. We go through the trials. They get sentenced. Life in prison. When we have judges that said they should have the death penalty, they expected these murderers to stay behind bars, but then we have to deal with a second travesty. A parole board that did not do their job, that will release a cop killer onto the street. It sent shockwaves to every one of our line of duty families with the worry, can this happen to the murderer that killed my husband, father, sister, brother? And the reality is, yes, it can. Even to this day, if you kill a New York City police officer today, it's life without the possibility of parole. With these family members who lost their husbands, fathers, brothers, are those heroes less important? The problem we have with this parole board is they put the junior most parole commissioners in charge of these cases. Then they didn't take the time to read the victim impact statements. Now, I've done this job for some time. The most emotional issue we've ever sat through is the victim impact statement, where they say my life was changed because my husband, my father, my brother is no longer here. These commissioners didn't even bother to listen. They did not take into consideration the welfare of the public. There is no neighborhood that wants a cop killer on the street. If they'll kill a police officer, they will kill anyone, period. They should never see the light of day. This is a political issue, but it's not an issue or left or right. It's an issue of right and wrong. Regardless of which end of the spectrum you're on, the public is outraged. New York City police officers work for the citizens of this city. We do our work with their support and the way they want us to do it. Well, this parole board is no different. They should go by the rules. They should ask themselves, how would I feel if it was my family member? Or how would I feel if they let these mutts live on my block and try to kill my children? So once again, we call and say that these commissioners should be fired. They are not and did not do their job. Our concern is the same commissioners are on this case once again. Those same commissioners will hear other cases. Remember, these families have to go through this victim impact statement every two years. Very emotional, very stressful, and now we've added a worry. These commissioners have to go. If they won't do their jobs, then we as citizens have to do ours and ask them to leave. It's my honor, as it is for every New York City police officer, to stand here and defend those that went before us. But it's equally an honor to introduce the family members of those heroes, 
those that know them the best. We have Manny here, Waverly's brother, who is after this press conference is going to do that victim impact statement which this parole board denied him in the first place. And he'd like to say a few words. So it's my honor to introduce Manny. Sir. Hi folks, thanks. Thanks for inviting me over. And uh, hey look, this they ought to rescind that, that decision about releasing Herman Bell. My life was shattered at the time when they killed my brother, meaning that my life has changed tremendously. Uh, I didn't know which way to go or anything. And uh, to see that this guy is getting out and my brother is not coming home, why should he walk the streets anymore? I've never heard that uh, a cop, is, I mean, a cop killer is supposed to walk the streets anymore. Why would that be? He killed three cops, three cops, and now he's back out, and ready to go back out in the street again. Like they say, a leopard doesn't lose their, their stripes, or their spots, rather, I'm sorry. But, hey, he needs to stay in jail. Don't come home till my brother comes home. Thank you. M A N N Y J O N E S. But that 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 kid. He don't, I don't I don't know what is, what's on his mind. He only been one month old. My, he, he, as a matter of fact, he was born in April. My brother was killed down, shot down in uh, May. So, what's he talking about? I don't understand what, what this, this motivation is all about. Somebody must have offered him something. You know, because I can't see why he would be doing this. His mother, she's not uh, Mary Jones. His mother's Mary Lewis. Okay, Mary Jones has been dead for about 10, 15 years. I, I don't understand the story there with that. was a long time ago. Could you explain to us what you remember about getting that news in 71 about your brother? Is your older or younger brother? Older. Only brother I had. What was that day like in 71 when you got that news? Well, I felt something at that time when they announced it on the radio that, it, that two cops were killed. And then I got a phone call from my sister-in-law telling me that he was dead. Shot. Thank you. I don't know. I'll tell him when I get up there. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll say what I He's uh, Yeah. I'm talking to you from the heart. <laughs> we also have with us the Ryman family. And their idea is the right idea. Pictures sometimes tell the story. And we have to look at the pictures of a New York City police officer who not only served on duty but off duty, whose family still serves to this very day. So look into the eyes of this hero police officer. Look into the eyes of our hero families. That's what we think this parole board should be doing. As Manny said, He's going to go upstairs and testify from the heart. That pain never goes away. But we need your help as the public. We need your help not only on these parole cases, but all cop killer cases. Please take the time when you go home to your safety of your families today to go on our website, nycpba.org, and hit the button that says, keep cop killers in jail. Send these parole commissioners a message. We will not stand for this. If they kill them, they'll kill us. Questions? Okay, they, they like to stand with their statement that they've made to the parole commissioners. We're hoping that the commissioners listens like you all are here today.
that's okay. great. That's he's doing is that. But he ought to just keep on doing it in prison. Not out here on the streets. He come out here on the streets, then he be writing book reports and things like that. No, he can keep his butt in jail. Keep where, that's where he belongs. He don't shoot cops and then come back out in the streets. Especially, and he admitted to it. So how do you do that? Yes, absolutely. It's one of the most important criteria. And the question you may ask is why? Why would they do that? Well, we want to get that answer too. Why would you not take the words of the people that knew our heroes best? Take the words of the people that say how their lives have changed, how their family member, a hero police officer, didn't go to church with them any longer, won't be there on those special occasions, miss the weddings, the birthdays, the cookouts. That's the question that they have to answer. I have no idea, and it has to be politics, but I ask this, who are they trying to serve? Like city police officers, we serve the public. All sides of the political spectrum are shocked by this release. Are you saying that they denied them the right, or they didn't call them, or he didn't know what was going on? Because there's a difference that he was denied and a difference of, well, he didn't know what was going on. Or it was easily to find the families and reach out to them. They did not do that. We, if we could find them, they could find them. So they denied them that right to speak. And we've had that before. We've had a murder and cop killer we didn't hear from the family and we held them in prison because they didn't hear from the most important people. We're saying the same thing here. You didn't listen the first time, so hopefully you'll hear it the second time from another family member that wasn't heard from. Yes, they had to, and they should, and they legally could. This should be suspended. There should be an investigation of this parole board, why they made that decision, why they didn't do their job, why they did not listen to the words of the judge who sentenced this month that said, if I could, I would have gave him the death penalty. But in lieu of that, behind bars for life, why they didn't listen to that. But more importantly, why didn't they listen to our families? Thank you, everyone. Thank you for covering this most important issue.